evidence is very strong. I think the strongest evidence we ever obtained in trials in recent years. There are a number of studies, cardiovascular outcome studies, dedicated renal outcome studies and heart failure outcome studies where SGLT2 inhibitors were tested. And in a recent paper in JAMA, Darren Medwire has summarized in a meta-analysis the totality of evidence of these SGLT2 inhibitor trials. The results are very consistent for uh, cardiovascular outcomes and uh, renal outcomes. Uh, yes, there are data. Uh, it started 2015 with the EMPAREC outcome study, where uh, we could see that um, cardiovascular death was reduced also in patients with chronic kidney disease and published in circulation uh, later on. But recently there was a paper about sotacliflozin, another SJT2 inhibitor in the New England Journal where uh, these data were confirmed. So SGLT2 inhibitor reduces cardiac death also in patients with chronic kidney disease. Yes, this is a very surprising uh, recent uh, new area which has been opened for SGLT2 inhibitors that they even retard the progression of non-diabetic chronic kidney disease. It has been shown by Hido Lambus Hairspink in the New England Journal in the DAPA CKD study and recently with extended data by David Wheeler in the Lancet Diabetes Endocrinology. The mechanisms are similar and the in this case, dapagliflozin retarded the progression in IgA nephropathy and focal segmental glomerulosclerosis subgroups of the DAPA CKD study. I know the, everybody, every doctor was concerned about the initial dip, the reduction in glomerular filtration rate. Uh, we have seen this already many years ago with uh, RAS inhibitors and apparently occurs again with SGLT2 inhibitors. We have uh, studied this dip and have found uh, no concerns, not at all and no safety concerns. Vice versa, the incidence of acute kidney injury of acute renal failure was less, for example, with dapagliflozin in the EMPAREC outcome. So the EGFR dip uh, can be explained mechanistically and it has no concerns and even my advice would be there is no necessity to measure creatinine after a certain time, for example two weeks. Just treat, provide organ protective treatment and continue with treatment without measuring serum creatinine. unfortunately and uh, it is called inertia but it has a, a reason that we do not yet uh, have a label for SJT2 inhibitors in Europe for patients with chronic kidney disease or with an EGFR below 60 or 45. So actually nephrologists cannot use it because they mainly see patients with an EGFR below 45 and we urgently wait for the indication the EMA hopefully will provide soon. As in other parts of the world where SGLT2 inhibitors can be used above a GFR of 30 and there is no necessity to stop them until patients go into dialysis. So far there is big hope, it's an underuse, but I think patients and doctors wait for the approval of these drugs for patients with chronic kidney disease. <music>